<laughs> so people just start joining us. So we've got four people so far who have joined us. So welcome. We'll just wait for everyone to get in and then, uh, or maybe that's it. Maybe there's only four. We had about 20, 22, 23 people sign up for the seminar today. So that's, that's okay on a, well, it's a sunny day in Salford now. It was a rainy day earlier. Yeah, it's morning. A bit rainy in Devon today. Not too bad. So have you guys been doing many um, seminars or online seminars or? I've done loads of Zooms since, you know, not a seminar as such. I've done, I did, um, I did a, a workshop, um, a PowerPoint, sorry, with my, for you, Jim, I want it, for the students of Take Care Son, um, where they just went through all the pages of the book and I told the story behind the book, you know. But that, that worked, actually. So um, that's something yeah. you could possibly use as well and at any time if you want. I did, you know, because you've seen the story, haven't you, Take Care Son? So if you ever want that, I could do that for you. So, That'd be good. Yeah, it worked really well. I did a group of four students um, for the special study unit um, on dementia. So I'm working with, yeah, with four students. And I asked Tony if he kindly um, present his book, which they really enjoyed. So it was really engaging as always. Graham's given us away. Graham Slater? Slater. Slater for the silent <laughs> I'm anxiously waiting for your mum or dad to give us away. Yeah, that's Graham. <laughs> oh, is that who's just giving us away? <laughs> I had a feeling it was going to be your dad. <laughs> oh, that's great. So we'll just give people another another minute and then we'll um, we'll make a start. Um, so, well, if you're on already, welcome everybody. Um, we're just giving people a little bit more time just to get on and then um, then we'll be cracking on. Hope you've all got a cup of tea with you. I got my flask so it doesn't go cold if I talk too much. <laughs> Tony, you got some interesting artwork behind you. It was. You have behind you some on the wall some interesting artwork. That's well, the, the wall is I gave Daisy that wall to draw on my little granddaughter, so she just drew loads of cats. She loves cats. So, and then you've got. Um, there's a picture, I don't know, there's a, I mean, this wall's more interesting. This has got full of posters like the Stones and Bowie and Eric Cantona and all sorts, um, the Beatles, and that's full of little pictures and big pictures. So I just, the house is absolutely, there's no space for a, a wall space or anything. I've got images, cartoons, paintings, everything all over the house. Sounds um, fab. Perhaps you shouldn't say this on television. <laughs> I was thinking that those I thought, oh, Tony's cartoons are getting better, but now I understand. <laughs> oh, it's kicking off, it's kicking off. No, it's, uh, I just said to Daisy, just draw, and she just like looked at me, gave her a pen, and she just drew, and I, I filmed it, so I've got a little film of Daisy drawing, and she sings as she's drawing. She, she's, she's 23, which is, but no, I'm just joking. She's, uh, she's six, uh, but she just loves drawing. So me and her sit in this room, and we draw for hours and hours, just creating stories together. It's fabulous. Oh, that's, that's brilliant. You can't yeah. be children to creativity. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we'll make a start if that's okay with everyone. So welcome to a conversation with Gina Awad and uh, Tony Husband. My name is Emma Smith. I'm the project manager for Empowered Conversations, which is a project of Age UK um, Salford. So there's been a big move for us. We've moved over to Age UK from uh, six degrees over in the last month. So we're delighted to be with Age UK um, Salford. We're, we're in a bigger dementia team now. So there's more opportunities for us to sort of build and develop the work that we've been doing. So I'm just going to hand over to Gina and Tony just to introduce themselves. Hi everyone, whoever's watching. Um, I'm Gina Awad and I founded and lead the Ex Dementia Action Alliance. Um, which oh, we launched in 2015, so it's been about five years now. So yeah, amongst other things, yeah, that's my primary focus. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm Tony, Tony Husband. Um, 
cartoonist for since 1984 full time, worked for Private Eye, The Times, um, all magazines all over the world. Um, got involved with dementia from a little book, Take Care Son, about my dad's journey through dementia. And it's just brought me into the dementia world, which is fabulous and unique, wonderful people like we're sharing with today. So it's, um, yeah, just a nice, nice journey, but love drawing and love creating and that's, you know, that's what I do. Brilliant. Thanks, Tony. So welcome everyone. If you've not been to one of the seminars before, or if you've not been on a Zoom seminar, I'm sure you've been to plenty of Zoom meetings with different families and different work colleagues, but a Zoom seminar is a little bit different. So don't worry if you can't see yourself on the screen, that's entirely normal. So you should just be able to see the three of us. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see um, something called a Q&A and a chat. Um, so if at any point you think, oh, I've got a question, you know, you don't have to have got my pencil here, but you don't have to write it down. You can just make a note of it in the Q&A and then we can ask Tony and Gina at the end of their presentation or their chat, if that's okay. So I was just saying to Tony and Gina, I think we've done about 15 of these um, seminars and they sort of came out of the fact that we were gonna do a conference back in March and it didn't happen for obvious reasons. And we we're thinking, okay, well, we've got all these people lined up. What should we do? So we went, okay, let's do a seminar. So we did a seminar and then it carried on and carried on. And then we've been sort of out trawling for really interesting people to bring together to do seminars. And that's why we've got Gina and Tony with us today. So I'm absolutely delighted that we've got you. This is sort of our response to COVID. It was thinking- you know, It's me, Emma, but you've gone quiet. Have I? Can you hear me okay, Gina? I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Tony. Oh, Graham's wait, raised, raised his hand again. Hi, Graham. Um, so this was our, our response to COVID. It, it was us thinking about what can we do? What can we offer people that's a bit different and bringing these seminars out um, to a wider audience than perhaps would have gone to a conference actually does provide people with quite an interesting sort of one hour um, where we sort of challenge them to think about things in a slightly different way. We might have researchers on, practitioners, people with lived experience who will share their stories and just, you know, help us just think about things in a slightly different way. Um, I'll just say very quickly, Empowered Conversations deliver communication courses across Greater Manchester for family carers and also for professionals. And we have Empowered Carers, which is one-to-one -one support that we offer for carers um, of people with dementia in Salford. So that's enough of me chatting now. So just remember that Q&A function at the bottom. I'm going to hand over to Gina and Tony. I'm going to sit, sit here and sit my tea and enjoy this conversation. Oh, thanks for having us on, Emma. It's really a privilege to have been asked. Uh, and I think we wanted to start really, Tony, didn't we, of, of talking about how we met. We met back in 2016. Um, at the Phoenix Centre in Exeter, one wet, windy, um, autumnal um, evening um, where Tony had been invited down to um, present his book, Take Care Son, about his dad living with dementia, which is mainly illustrations with few words, but the power of it is quite incredible. It was, um, you were invited down, Tony, by Exeter University, which is part of a, the Festival of Social Sciences. Um, I was one of the people in the audience and I was just absolutely captivated by the story um, and the way Tony told it, but also um, the visual way of telling that story, um, the cartoon, the cartoons. I found it so moving um, that Tony has this ability to be able to bring humour and emotion into his images so eloquently with very, very minimal narrative. Um, and so we met that, that day and um, had a little chat afterwards. Tony had a, um, a queue of people waiting to um, sign the books that, that they bought till they wanted to buy from him. And we kind of exchanged email addresses. And then I invited Tony back down to Exeter um, to do it's the same again, basically, but for the Exeter Dementia Action Alliance as a as an event for some of our member organisations, people living with dementia and their families. So we had an event at a local lawyer, um, lawyer's office, um, which went down really well. Um, but yeah, Tony's Tony's book is incredible. Tell tell everyone about your book, Tony, and how yeah, it's basically. My dad has had dementia. Uh, he passed away. I'm sat in my office one night with a bottle of Rioja, just thinking about my dad. He'd, he'd gone, and three months before. And I just started a conversation with him about dad, what was it like to have dementia, 
I heard his voice say, what, I had dementia and asking, asking me to remember. And they're like, wow. So we had this conversation. I don't know if it was the wine, my dad, or my imagination, all three, but I drew three pages of rough ideas of what it was like at the beginning. Some of the incidents at the end where he says, can you imagine how hard it is to lose everything and everyone, memory of everyone you've ever known? Can anything be so hard? And I said, no, dad, I don't think it can. And so that's how the book started. Um, Stephen Fry tweeted those pages and it came, you know, not a bestseller, but it became known amongst the dementia world. And I was invited to do power, power um, talks to, um, to groups of people around the country. Um, X University actually had a very good dementia program um, led by Professor Linda Clare, who I think you and know Gina and work with. And well, she do know Linda. And um, so I'd worked with a photographer Ian Beasley and a poet Ian McMillan um, on projects for, um, for the university. And she asked me if I'd come down and do my talk. And that's the, the talk I was talking about, like, you know, what Gina was talking about. So, um, yeah, it was good. And Gina, I remember everyone had more or less gone and I was going for a meal and Gina came over and um, she said, <laughs> she, didn't, she, she didn't want to buy a book because she'd got one at home. So um, she wished she'd bought a talk and sign it, but she didn't want to buy one. But anyway, I didn't mind that. So we, um, we ended up having a long chat and realized we had a lot in common. And basically, what Gina's got, which I've found is this enthusiasm for dementia to raise awareness and to care for people with dementia and tell their stories. And I just thought, you know, I was new to it and it is kind of connecting with someone like that who I knew we could work as a team doing in the future with projects. And, and that's how it turned out. We eventually turned into a very good team. Um, and I think so anyway. I mean, it's up to other people to decide that. But, um, we've created some some good stuff, I think, Gina, haven't we? We have, yeah. And so from there, Tony came down, did his talk to Exeter in Exeter, and then you invite somebody was I think Leslie uh, Councillor Leslie Robson was there, and she was going to be the mayor the following year. And you were invited down to speak at the Guildhall okay. and do it well, again, mm -hmm. you, which was great. Well, that, I, that, I do my talk about about the book, and it's quite sensitive, and it's quite. You know, it's very emotional at parts, and it can be funny. It makes people laugh. It makes people cry. Um, but after a long, I was booked to talk at quite half past ten or something. So after three hours of people drinking and um, you know talking and everything else, then I had to talk about the sensitive subject. It didn't quite work. No. People going to the toilet and saying, "Oh, shall we go a taxi?" And uh, <laughs> just about to say something really like heartbreaking or something, we'll say. Well, you taxi to anybody for any Boris Johnson for a taxi, and he wasn't there, but it was that sort of thing, and it didn't work. But the actual event was nice. Yeah, it was great. So, um, and I remember that now. Not about I that. think I think the learning from that is um, don't ask Tony to do a talk at half past ten about something like that. It just didn't well, quite work. After everyone's been drinking for three hours. Yeah, it's not but good. it's been a long time since we've been to an event like that anyway. So yeah, from there, what did we do? So then we we got involved with a couple of care homes and Tony was invited to do a mural in both of those care homes, which basically reflected the essence of those care homes and some of what they offer, you know, the activity mm. and the essence of them really, um, which I supported. And then um, when we created, explain the, the length or the size of the mural, Tony, just to give people a... Yeah, the murals are about 15 feet long, about three feet wide, and they just stay placed on the wall. And basically, I'd done one up at um, a care home in Warrington for them, and it was just about the activities that go on in a care home. And basically, to tell the story that if you are of a certain age or you, you do have dementia, that doesn't mean it's the end. There's still a lot you can do. There's still many activities you can do. So it was like painting, um, gardening, walking, you know, poetry, reading, all sorts of things. Yeah, the so resident into this long mural. Um, and it was, they looked really nice. Yeah, so from that, and then they had it, they displayed it, they displayed it in the, the sort of reception area, which is lovely. And it was nice to go back and they sort of unveiled it when they had it all 
put up on the wall, which is lovely. And then while we, while Tony was drawing some of that, I went round to some of the residents and collected some little stories that were personal to them. Um, and then Tony would come round to the residents' rooms. I give him a, a kind of a, a summary of that story, and then he'd draw draw some some images for them in cartoons that they could have framed and put up in their room, which was really lovely. Really, it was just a great way of meaningfully connecting um, with people um, living with dementia. And some of those people were living with quite late stage dementia. And it was just wonderful to be able to connect with them in that way. And yeah. that, that was great, wasn't you know, it? I thought while I was doing this mural, which took about four hours to do, um, Gina was going around, around the home and, and going chatting to people and getting these stories. So. And at the end of it, we sat, we went room to room and we just sat with the, the lady gentleman and just Gina said, right, tell them, tell me your story. So I, Gina would tell the story, then I would draw it and give it to them as a gift so they could hang on the wall and it's a permanent memory for them and for the family. And I mean, there's one lady, Gina, do you remember the lady with the cat? And she said she could bring a cat in their care home and she really missed the cat. So I said, what does it look like? So she said, well, it's ginger. And I said, well, I've only got a black pen, so it won't be ginger. But um, she laughed. She will go on your cheek and you. Anyway, I, I drew the cat she imagined, and she just looked at it, didn't she? And just went, oh, my cat, you brought my cat to me, and just burst into tears. So she had that then. And then there was the chap who was in the RAF, and mm. he'd got pictures all over the wall. And, you know, the, I realised then that he was one of the, the guys in the in the picture and always this you, you and Gina had got that story and Gina had been able to get that story from him and I could do a drawing for him that would connect with his past and his family you know that they could look so this this was a lovely way of connecting with and bringing stories out from people and back to life for them mm. Mm. That, I mean that, that was really great and obviously that's something that we can do as well which was just really enjoyable um, then we, Tony had an idea. I, I really wanted, from the Alliance's perspective, I wanted to raise awareness, but do it in a slightly different way um, and reach sort of different areas and whatever. And Tony sort of said, why don't we create a calendar? This was sort of 20, summer 2019. Um, and I said, oh, that, that would be amazing. So I then set out on a bit of a task to approach some of our members um, and ask them if they'd like to sponsor a month. So after sort of a lot of work, groundwork and research, we got 12 sponsors for 12 months for 2019 calendar. And then um, what we did is, is I was really keen to, for each of the organisations and some of those were care homes. There was a, um, Age UK was one. There was the football club or the supporters club. There was, uh, I can see Rachel saying, I love the calendar, but that's this one, the, this next year's, which we'll talk about in a minute. Thanks, Rachel. Um, so we, I said to Tony, it'd be really, and solicitors as well, so it'd be really good if we could have a theme for each month that kind of linked with those organizations. So we came up with um, different themes. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but um, I'll try and hold one up. The first one was January, 2019. And what was really interesting about creating this calendar was for me is, is obviously coming up with the, the themes that Tony then drew, which was brilliant. But then, you know, how educate what an educational resource. It's so much more than a calendar. And you actually did a um, we managed to get a display at Exeter Library, actually, where all the images were, were put up there. But this this was January. And without the month on it, you, you've got I don't know if you could see it, compassion and understanding. So it's basically um, it's basically showing that in a shop, somebody might forget that they, that they bought something and not paid for it and gone out. And it's showing a security guard being very supportive. Um, and it says, oh, Mr. Smith, you've forgotten to pay again. And he put, have I, oh, have I, oh, sorry. Um, and it's just, it's just a really nice image. And they're all like that. Um, music gives us freedom. It's another one, a care home setting. That, that so music gives us freedom came from, um, my dad loved playing the, his, he was a very good pianist. And in his care home, we got him a keyboard. And even though he forgot everything else, he could still play beautifully, still could remember and the, and the words. And I went into his um, room one day and he's playing this atmospheric music. 
And it was like Blick and Waitman sort of, you know, landscape, atmospheric stuff. I said, Dad, I don't recognize that. Is that yours? He said, Yes, it gives me freedom. And I think that was so profound. And so that's the title of that, you know, that's I yeah. use wherever I can. Which so is wonderful. Can... We've got lots of, I just pick another one out. Oh, I like this one. Yeah, so this is a lawyer's one. And this, this the theme was power of attorney. I'll let you read it if you can. Is that clear? If you can find the football one, Gina, you know, that's a nice I one. I will do. I'll show you that one. So basically what it says is um, it's a lawyer in his office with a couple and then there's somebody living with dementia there. It says, we are inquiring about lasting power of attorney as we're rather concerned that dad keeps writing checks to the milk from, milkman for £100,000. And then um, he says, well, the lad works hard. He needs a tip every now and then. So that was that. So, well, that, so that came from a friend whose um, mum kept giving him... Um, he said, yeah, I think you, you're, you're a good son. Here's a check for you. And she'd give him a check for £100,000 or a million pounds one day. She said, go and look at, go, go and treat yourself to something nice. And um, so, whereas my dad actually went the other way and he wouldn't give us a penny. Um, I remember going and we booked a meal once. He said, I'm going to pay for the meal. And um, we booked the club for the family. And we sort of booked the golf club, went for the meal, had the meal. And he said, I want wine on every table for everyone. And at the end of the meal, I gave him the bill. He said, what's this? I said, the bill with the food. And he said, I'm an old man on a pension. You're asking me to pay. Said, Dad, <laughs> you, you, it's your suggestion. So that was, that, that came from those, they all come from somewhere, these things. It's, it's um, and that's yeah. why what Gina said about, about the multi-purposeful way you can, the, the people react to them because it's happened to them. People can say, oh, that, that's just like my dad or my mom or my grandma. Mm -hmm. And um, it's that personal connection with the cartoons and the way we work, getting the stories, that is is the joy of them. Really. Yeah, and and we did really well. I mean, some of these went to Australia, South Africa. They went all over the place, didn't we? We did a little impact report afterwards, which it just showed the power of it and how people really linked into it. And people living with dementia and their families said, "Wow, this is really wonderful way of raising awareness." So we did that in 2019. Um, didn't do anything, didn't do 2020 because it takes an awful lot of human resource to sort of to create it and then to get it distributed. And and a lot of it, to be honest, is, is through social media. So yay for social media. Um, and what else have we done, Tony? We've done lots of different things. We've, we've the story about the bank. You, you know, yeah. So, so it happened to be World Alzheimer's Month and it was a Monday morning and I was passing through the city centre of Exeter and I passed the bank and I knew the bank manager because I'd done some dementia friend sessions um, for, for the staff. And she came running out and she said, Gina, can you come here? I need your help. So I ran in um, and she was basically really concerned because there was a gentleman there that was living with dementia, given power of attorney to his daughter, um, but felt he was being robbed by her. He couldn't get access to his money. So the bank knew that, that his daughter had power of attorney, phoned her and said, you know, dad, your dad wants to get some money out. So she needs, she discreetly sort of came by to give them the information they needed to organize to get some money out for him. Mm -hmm. Then he saw her and he said, she's a thief, she's taking my money. It was all really, really stressful. So I sort of supported the, the daughter, um, the bank manager supported the chap living with dementia, managed to get him some money sorted. Um, and the bank manager said to me afterwards, you know, Gina, I feel really bad. I, she spoke to me the next day and she said, I've been really out of sleep this night last night, thinking that if my staff had had a bit more awareness of dementia, I think that we would have been able to really, um, you know, support that. And I felt that although I did in the end, because it was brought to me by a member of the staff, I felt that my staff needed to be more informed. So I said, let, you know, let's take this as a positive, as a, as a learning point and think, actually, what, what can we do to help? How can we support you? So I delivered some more dementia friend sessions. And I also got in contact with the, the daughter and said, would she be OK to consent if we wrote a very sensitive story about how this was a learning point for the bank and for us? And how could we share that? So I did a little write up, got some quotes and um, I sort of approached Tony and I said, um, we're not going to be able to take a photo of all of us. That's not going to work. What do you think you can do? So he created this amazing cartoon. 
um, that reflected the scenario with real sensitivity. Yeah. Um, what, the, what she's not telling you here is um, what I do with people. I do, um, I do a rough drawing and say, is this okay? And because you don't want to go to full color and then them say, oh no, can you add three people in? So this is at the beginning actually, Gina, you know, when we're working together. So you didn't know how it worked really. So I showed Gina the rough and she thought that's lovely. And then I did it in full color, really big drawing, full color. And I said, what do you think? She said, could you with a few more people and can you add four more people? <laughs> so I had to read out, redraw the whole bloody thing. But anyway, we, we learned to deal with that, didn't we? I'm a bit of a perfectionist. There was other little points in that. I was saying, oh, can you just do that? And and well, I felt, yeah. but I just didn't feel that it really quite reflected the scenario. Well, the, the idea is you, you say it at rough stage. You say it when you hands the rough and you say, oh, it doesn't even... quite work. And can you add five people? Not wait till I finish this masterpiece. <laughs> or can so, you add another crowd and a bus coming through? And, and you know, if there's a horse-drawn carriage in the background. So, so I... It, I, I got into trouble and so the message for anyone that's working with Tony is make sure you say things at the pencil rough stage, don't, stage and don't start asking for new things when he's coloured it in because yeah. it takes a lot of time. I actually so, did the whole book with Not University about the carer and I did all these drawings, 50 odd drawings and I, yeah they're great, everybody did them so I did them all in colour and then I sent them all in and she came back and said I've just shown a few carers and think there should be a few changes because this and that won't happen. And I was like, oh my God. But, you know, the um, it, people don't know how it works, so that's fair enough. Gina does now, we do work well together, so um, yeah. we don't have that problem. Yeah. She is, she's worse than me in his life with private eye as an editor. <laughs> I'd rather be in his life as editing my work than, than Gina. She's, um, oh dear, I'm saying something. I do apologise, Tony. Please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> So we created, we decided to create, a, especially with the, the, the horrendous year we've all had with the pandemic. Well, we did that um, thing leading up to, didn't we? Where we um, we did the little monthly cartoons. For the yes, UK I'm as, to say as that. Guide. So what what we did is is during <clears> lockdown, <throat> first the first lockdown, I said to Tony, you know, it's really tough for people. And we were thinking about themes like kindness and community collaboration and how. People were doing amazing things. So each week um, together, I mean, obviously Tony did the drawing. We sort of worked together and came up with an idea and, and shared it on social media to just try and inspire people and keep people, try and keep people grounded. And I think that and was really- also about, about raising awareness about people who are isolated, especially people with dementia, living with dementia and they can't ask for help, they don't know. And, and they can quite get lost in the system really during that time. So this was kind of to raise awareness of, of, of the predicaments of people, not just people with dementia, but people on their own and, um, you know, and to keep their eye on them. So there was, was stories like that, weren't there? Yeah. And, and then about technology, having Zoom, um, if you could use Zoom and have, you know, like the Zoom sing along with the thing. So we were trying to highlight various ways that people could get through this COVID yeah. lockdown. Um, together. And I think um, talking about Zoom and things, you know, we're, we're learning by default and it's been a, a great platform as well as other mediums. But for some people it is tricky, but thanks to Innovations in Dementia, I know Steve Milton's done some great, um, you know, real step by step, even I can work it out. Um, and I'm not great at these things, I'm a bit of a technophobe. So, um, you know, they are available to, to watch and they really are step by step, so they're, they're great. So we've done that. We've done another calendar. I think you've got that. I know Rachel said she loves it. Um, so that's out and available. Um, this one, this time it's a desk calendar. So um, again, we've got 12 different images um, with a little bit of a, a, a little caption. Um, I mean, this yeah. is a lady being pushed in the wheelchair by a younger lady and she's saying, it's lovely you taking for a walk. What's your name again? And, and the girl says, it's Gemma, mom. it's Gemma. So it's that kind of poignant thing. Then I've got a lovely one here. Talk about, we talk about children and people with dementia, how important it is to bring children in on it. And children aren't phased by it. You know, they, they will be if you don't explain what it is. So this one is um, a little girl saying to her granddad, let's go outside granddad, I'll, I'll be your memory for you. And Love when that, that happens, that's children or that 
connected, you know, they're intuitive. Because um, people living with dementia are like children in a way. Um, so, you know, that's, so this is our little calendar at the moment, which is, you know, I think. And yeah, thanks. So I think the point to say with that is, is I've done some um, dementia friend sessions in schools and I try and get feedback from some of the children. And, and there was one little boy and I said to him, what, what are you going to tell your mum and dad when you get home? And he said, I'm going to tell them that feelings matter. And I thought that was really quite profound. Feelings matter because they do. Um, you know, we're all we all have our have our feelings. And I think often for people with dementia and not for everyone, because everyone's different but their, their emotions are heightened um, so we can connect with them. And I think that that's really important. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, and the calendar again is raising awareness again for the, um, you know, to keep on that continuing journey, raising awareness and to perhaps a bit of a guide because neither of us are experts like professors of dementia, but we, are, we do, you know, I've been a carer Regina's work with throughout the community. And um, so we kind of know coming from the street level what it's about. And that's where we talk from. You know, we don't talk down to people because we are the people. So um, it kind of works that way, I think. I think, I think, I think, yeah, I think you're right, Tony. I think that that sort of grassroots work is so important. And whilst I haven't been impacted by dementia with a close family member, I've worked with a lot of people and been with a lot of people with dementia at all different stages and also families and, and not to forget about the the impact on families and significant others and and you know that kind of leads me on to say that Tony and I are you know hoping to get involved in a project where we might be able to um, create a book which um, highlights the diverse context of family carers um, that's something that we, we both really like to do and, and we've started looking into that so I guess watch this space really Tony on that isn't it? Yeah I mean we, we've, the idea of basically is to tell stories of carers and just family carers special carers like in homes um, the carers would go from door, you know house to house carer type so the wide diversity of people who care and they give so much to the community and said the, the government's an absolute fortune on the quiet so it's letting people have a voice again and and it's like Gina going to them and saying getting their stories and I'm drawing the stories that she brings back and um, we've had a zoom meeting with a, a lady whose husband has dementia and she was telling her story and we've done it we've got a publisher who's my publisher who likes the idea but of course anyone who's done a book knows it's a long journey and things can go wrong so you don't, I've learned in this game not to believe anything until it's in the post and you get the copy of it. And then I, I'm, a little, I'm a little bit different to that, Tony, aren't I? I'm a bit yeah, like, like, it's going to happen. I see the end result. And Tony's yeah. like, you know, step and, by and, step. And Gina but, asks so many questions about everything. It's <laughs> like, how's it printed? What's, what quality paper will it be? Um, like, <laughs> That's not true, Tony. That is not true. No, but but seriously, it's... it's you do actually, you do, which is a good thing. You want to know the the, the, the basics of it. Yeah, well, I, I like to know the process and how these things come together yeah. and seeing your book, how it obviously developed and how it's made a massive impact. I, I, I've, I've done it so long now. I so said, it'll be there. Don't worry, we'll send the drawings in. Yeah, I just, it'll be there. Yeah, but how will it be there? What's the process of being there? I don't know. It's, I just... I've done it yeah. so long now, I've forgotten. I just know it happens, so you just believe in yourself and things happen, you know. Yeah, and I, I've been really fortunate. I've um, Over the last few years, about four years now, I've been um, presenting a radio show, which is on when there's a fifth Saturday in the month. So there's about four or five in a year. And I know I used to have three guests on, but it was a bit challenging in and out of the studio because it's only a tiny studio. But a lot of the the um, guests that I've had on more recently, obviously because of COVID, has, has been over the phone. But it's been a really great platform for me to be able to share, you know, be there for people to share their stories. I've had couples on living with dementia. I've had family carers. I've had social enterprises, um, care home managers, you know, people that are doing research, lots of different voices. Um, oh, and Tony. Sorry, I forgot yeah, Tony. Yeah, you are. Um, no, he's, he's, um, he's <laughs> 
so yeah I've, I've had about 40 odd guests over the last um four years and, and they're all on mixed cloud so it's just great to be able to to share people's stories and um i've got um i think rachel's going to be on your colleague next year emma talking about some of the work she does and um i don't know if damien's watching in from from the innovations in dementia but he's going to be on talking about his getting along program in january um, and I've had Rachel and Steve from Innovations and Dementia on before. So lots and lots of people. Um, and I, I just love to be able to share people's stories and music as well. Yeah, well, talk about music. Um, a project I'm involved with at the moment is um, they call Musica and they, they work with, it's about the importance of music for those living with dementia. And uh, the lady called Rosie Mead is lovely. We got on really well. And I've kind of, she's asked me to get a few ambassadors involved. I've got a few bands that I know involved, some good bands like Doves and Low and um, Badly Drawn Boy, people you might know or might not, Mark Riley. And I, with a friend, Sean Taylor, we've written a song based on one of my poems and it's being produced as we speak and I'm going to do a video on it. So, so it's these, we both have our things away from this, um, but we always come back together and we always say, what should we do next? It's like this, flame that goes and it's um, it's really energetic and enthusiastic and we you're working now on a project you know, about walks around Exeter aren't you? Yeah yeah Co Cozy cozy Roots um, which stands for Circle of Somewhere Yours and that was created by Joe Erlen who's an avid marathon runner who's run about um, nearly 80 marathons and she's created this amazing route that circles the city but is also can be divided into eight little routes so Tony's been involved with that, with creating an image in a different style of drawing for you, hasn't it? Yeah, been I mean, Tony? I've got one here, which I did, um, there's one walk goes through the woods. So, and I thought, well, I love, I love trees, I love birds. So I, I did this drawing here, which I don't know if you can see. Yeah, gorgeous. And that's basically a wren feeding the chicks. So it's drawings like that. But the, the, again, this, the walk idea is, again, for people living with dementia and others to get out discover the you know your surrounds but also get excited fresh air and um another worthy cause but again we're just working together on this we might be a little booklet coming out hopefully in due course yeah we that's what we're working towards creating a little guidebook um for people in the community generally to be able to tap into bits i mean there's some of it's um a busier route than than others and then you've got some off the beaten track where people you know are discovering new new areas to walk um, so some of the sections are more are suitable for dementia, depending on mobility, and and some won't be so much. And of course, it depends on the weather. But it's a brand, it's a brand new route that um, that we've discovered and, and Joe's created, and it's really quite exciting. So that's sort of coming more next spring, I think. Just going back to take care. So this is that's my take care son book we talked about earlier. There's my dad with his little dog Rossi. It's also being produced in German. Um, Matt yeah. Gutt, Matt Gutt, my son. Um, that's not German, that's my version of German. It's not actually, I don't know that's how they say it, but Matt Gutt, my son. So, yeah, again, the story going around the world. Um, but yeah, it's, that's where the book, that can take care of some book. And, and it's, yeah. um, like I said, you know, to reiterate, it's such a powerful story. And it's literally 60 pages. So it's a small book with a big heart. It's all about heart, everyone, isn't it? It's all about yeah. meeting each other from the heart, I think. Yeah, and it's about... about Emma, we, Emma, we've talked for England. How are we doing? You're doing absolutely fine. Thank you so much for that. Um, I was just thinking, Tony, when I first read that book, I was just at, I was just at work and Phil just handed it to me to read. And, and it just, you know, like it's very hard to read the book and not having a, a quite strong emotional reaction. So I was just in the office crying. Um, okay. But it's a really beautiful book. Um, I think Carolyn's. Uh, oh, Carolyn's asked about the calendars. How how can we get the calendars? The calendars, um, if you email Exeter DAA. Is that the right one? Hang on. Let me. It should, I should know this, shouldn't I? Extra da at outlook.com. That will come through to me or my colleague. Yeah, extra da at outlook.com. They're seven pounds plus P and P, unless you live in Exeter, and then I'll deliver them by hand or sorry from a distance. Um, yeah, so they're seven pound each, and we've got some to share and sell and 
distribute. So yeah, please, if anyone wants one, you can get them from us. That's brilliant. I can also include that um, email. The people who've been today will get an email tomorrow just saying thanks for coming along. This is our next seminar. So I could include it in there as well, Gina. Thank so you. About it in case they've not made it. I would, and so I was sort of, I was reflecting on, I didn't say it at the beginning, but um, Tony, you did like um, on a napkin, which is often your style, that you'll just do something on a napkin. You did this like picture um, on a napkin and then Phil brought it to me. Or might not, I think it was on a napkin. Phil brought it in and he said, oh, I think we should use that. And we actually used this image. And I was, when I was messing around earlier trying to share the screen, I couldn't do it. Um, but we've got an image that you did for us of like, it's too like a couple going to meet someone which looks like someone in a care home and there's there's like a, a small man sort of quite low down and they're quite big and they're asking lots of questions and we use it on every single course mm -hmm. um, and we get people to look at that cartoon and we get people to so it's, it's on our final session so hopefully they've learned quite a lot by then and we get that cartoon up and we say what can you see and they're like they're asking too many questions the body language the towering over and they come out with all this great stuff and then we go brilliant now you go away and you draw something that you want to share with us and mm. then they go off and obviously they're like oh I can't draw but you know we encourage them and then we get them to draw some I saw somewhere recently where in a in a care home they've got a, um, a scribble wall so people can just draw, like, like over my shoulder here is my little granddaughter Daisy's drawings of, a, of cats. It's like a wall of cats. But in this care home, they have a scribble wall where anyone can go and draw on it. And people with, living with dementia have found it ideal to try and get the message across. So they will go, there's pens on the table, you just draw whatever you want on it. And um, I think that's a wonderful idea. Just creative, you know, being able to express yourself. I do this thing called, um, confessions, cartoon confessions, and it's where I take people's confessions, um, draw them, hand them back and the redeemed. And I've done these at rock festivals, so you can imagine sex clubs and rock and roll. Um, I've done them at weddings and I've done them all over the place. I've done, I did them at Exeter for the, um, there's a, a, a group in Exeter, I think it's Age UK, Penny Unit. And it's, um, yeah, it's the, what, it's called, um, Budding for allotment of time and the, you have an allotment and the people living with dementia have this allotment. And I went I went along there once with um, Ian McMillan and Ian Beasley and we got involved with them, we became friends with them. And one day they said, Can you do a cartoon confessional? So I asked the people there, you know, with the carers and, and the people with dementia, and I said, Have you got any confessions about your garden? And brother, oh no, I said, Oh come on, you've got confessions, look at you. So this lady said to her husband, Tell them about the strawberries. Or tell, tell them about the slugs. I don't want to tell them about the slugs. So I said, what's about the slugs? So he said, he used to eat the bastard in the next lot. And so he used to throw all my slugs into his. So I, I was able to draw this giant slug, you know. And, it, and then somebody said, oh, there's a guy who I used to sell strawberries, but didn't grow them. And the guy next door said, how can you, how can you sell strawberries and you don't grow them? And he said, it was basically his strawberries hung over into his pack. So he, Clicking them off and sold them and little things. And so, um, I was, so that was a way of, again of expressing stories and getting the stories out there. It's a wonderful way to do it. And I draw, and you know, Gina very quickly. And you know, they just um, they're there in front of them. It's quite wonderful, really. And it's wonderful to see the faces as they recognise. Oh wow, that's me, and that's the story. And it's you know, it's magical. Brilliant. I don't think I've I don't think I've ever seen you speak, Tony, where you've not then had like a big load of paper and then there's a massive queue of people who are oh. queuing up to get a picture drawn by you. And I think that makes such a difference. You know, people are coming away and you know it's a you're capturing a memory for someone or you're capturing something that's really important for them. And then they're going up on the wall, you know, they're really proud and they're they're you know, they're on the wall. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's just um, it's simple, but it's it's touching. Yeah, it's really nice, nice, nice ability to have here. Um, but also, it's about it's about the connection as well. It's not just the drawing; it's the connection. You just you know, for them to trust you with the story. Because a lot of people, as you know, with dementia, are frightened and scared, and they don't want to talk. They don't want to. But if you can just say, "Well, no, this is good. This is good. This will um, you'll have a memory. You'll be able to see yourself." And, 
And you know, they looked a bit well. One lady said about a holiday they had in Blackpool and she lost all the photographs and everything. And uh, I've been her and her family on the beach in Blackpool and a little kid riding a donkey, a little son riding a donkey, it was like brought it all back to us. So it's wonderful, yeah. And that's what we did in the care homes, really, you know, with those stories. We've had, um, someone's emailed me, um, so Tracy's, um, Tracy West has emailed me, she said um, she wanted this question to be submitted. Um, some of the, some, some of, this is for Tony. Um, some of the images you've created are so beautiful, poignant and wrapped in a dark comedy. What do you do to get yourself into the zone to draw them? I think wine and take loads of drugs. No, I don't. That's a joke. Um, no, I just, it's there. I don't know. People ask me where the ideas come from and they're there, they come out. Basically, um, I used to, have, I don't have it now, but I had a thinking couch where I lie on the, on the couch with a blank piece of paper and just create drawings. Then you got to sell them to private eye. Whatever going on in your life, you have to create funny things. And, um, and people don't always do a thing about it. Is it's just there, it's it just like I'm, I'm, I've tapped into a huge lake of ideas that I just turn on when I need them. Um, but people sometimes don't understand that that's work. People just think it's, you know, like, oh, you're just scribbling, it's easy. Um, I was on my thinking couch once in my studio many years ago, and I got a builder outside and it's pouring down. And it's called Rob, and he's working on the outside of the house. And I'm lying on thinking couch, drawing, and um, I knock on the door and I said, come in, Rob. And he came and he said, oh, sorry, Tony, I didn't know you were asleep. And I said, no, Rob, I'm working. He went, well, oh, that's not bloody work. He stormed off. He was covered in mud and wet. So people don't get it, that it's just like, you know, it's, it is. I was 30 odd years of being able to do this. But it's um, the question, the ideas are there. And I don't know. I do have a dark side, a dark sense of humour. And that comes out in private eye stuff. And, and it comes out in these the books, you know, because you have to have you know, because you're going into, you know, you're going into places that are quite dark and quite sad and quite wrong. So I'm going to prepare to take whatever comes along with that. But I find it fascinating. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Oh, Tony, oh, Tracy's went, bless you. Thanks for that insight, Tony. You're amazing. And Tracy sent us an email, so I'm going to forward that to you because it's a real sort of really beautiful email that she sent for you just to say Tracy, thank you. Tracy is doing um, is um, involved in a charity to raise to help planting trees in um, in Kenya. It's called Word Forest. I've just designed a t-shirt for them and other slides including Kate Wins have done the same. And it's about planting trees in the forest uh, to build forests in, around Kenya. So she does amazing work in a different field. Brilliant. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> you made her cry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you, darling man, you made me cry. <laughs> oh. um, so, just so Fiona had asked one a bit earlier on. Lovely to hear that people had their own pictures. How did the families respond? So, I think that was when you were drawing pictures within the care homes of like the cat and, and other people's situations. How did their families respond? You know that, Gina, because I was drawing. So, how was it? Yeah, I mean, um, when we were there, the residents were there, so there weren't families around um, as such that I can recall. Actually, no, there were a couple and they're really positive. They loved it because they could see the the individual face light up. They instantly connected. You know, you see this image, you don't have to think about words or look at words. It's just a picture. And depending on where their dementia is and how they can perceive that, you know, obviously, if, if they can perceive it well, then that's great. And and yeah, the families obviously loved that, really supportive and just, it's that personal touch, isn't it? Yeah, it was, it was a way in for them, wasn't it? Because it opened the door momentarily for them to go in and say, do you remember this dad or do you remember this mom? And they, they were able to then, it kind of, a memory that had gone was then shared for the family and they could then share it for that moment. So it was and, nice to Yeah, and also I'm just thinking out loud that also, um, with the workers, you know, the staff in the, sorry, I've got sun coming through my window. I'm very aware that the, the picture's faded. Oh, so funny, my sunny window. But yeah, the carers were saying, oh, I didn't realize that about so-and-so. So it was something that they could then have a conversation, some dialogue and narrative about, about that with the, with the person, so. Yeah, because that then left the, the carer with a bit more knowledge about the person they were looking after. Whereas the, you know, so like the guy with the RAF thing, it was a, like a new, they didn't know he was in the pictures with the, with the hurricane fight and the spitfire. Mm. Um, and then they said, 
they could have a conversation with him, then, you know, that's, yeah, that opened us at the point that it was, because um, the carers are doing amazing work and, you know, they're just, um, you know, they need a, that's possibly why the new book will, will give them, um, you know, a window to, you know. Yeah. Them. Do you think, have you, have you noticed this? Do you think that sometimes like a simple sort of cartoon is much easier for somebody to understand than a photograph or a film? You know, it's very, very, you know, there's not that much going on. There's not lots of colours. It's very sort of... Well, if, if you get the Daily Telegraph, say, and you look at the front page of the Daily Telegraph, you've got all these words, all these top writers, and then you get mat in a little square the size of a matchbox, and you'll say what they've all said in that little piece. And that's the genius of Matt. And he's more important than the writers because he's like, he pinpoints, he goes straight to it. Uh -huh. That's what we do with this. You know, you can buy books on dementia and encyclopedias on dementia, and you can watch, you know, talks and PowerPoints on serious stuff. But what this does, it just cuts to the chase, and this is what it's like. And this is basically what it's like for us, just all you people like us, to deal with it and to be a part of it. So, I was I was thinking about that from the perspective of a person with dementia as well. Just their like ability to understand, you know, as you're as you've drawn something for them, is that is that almost easier than looking at a photograph, which might have lots of things going on? Possibly, because I'm I'm drawing what they want me to draw in a way. I'm creating something from nothing, and they're telling me what you know. They'll say the beach in black or what was there, and they're going donkey. So you draw the donkey. It's so you're creating the story with them, and Gina did that, getting the stories out of them, creating the stories, and making making that real for them in that moment. Um, yeah, photographs are important, vital, important, um, and they're probably in a similar way the same. You know, you find an old photograph, it takes you right back there, and you remember, and you know, you wish you'd written on the back of the people and the names of the other people, but. Um, the photographs and cartoons um, compared to say big volumes of things are, are what people can connect with instantly and, and, and it works, it really does. I was thinking about some of those images that you just showed us from the calendar for this year and like, you know, the one where there's a daughter pushing a mom, it looks a beautiful scene, mum's in a wheelchair, yeah. daughter's pushing her and, you know, just in those two sort of bubbles of words, what you've conveyed there is so much emotion for the daughter. Well, the yeah. mom's having a great time, yeah, but she doesn't necessarily know who her daughter is, and, and how does that leave a daughter feeling? And in that, in those few words, you've sort of captured so much of what you know people caring for the um, people yeah, with dementia. Yeah, in that daughter's position, and you imagine what that's like, and how hard that must be, even though you're probably used to it. You know, I mean, with my dad, I was, remember. You know, my dad looking at me like, who are you type thing, and that does hurt. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, just telling a story in a simple way um, that people connect with because they're in the same situation. Yeah. Um, talking of dads, uh, Gina, your dad's been on, and he says, explain the virtual dementia tour I did with Gina. Oh, yes. Yes. Good. Good point. Yeah. So, oh, it must have been about three or four years ago. Um, I can't remember the company, but a virtual dementia tour um, where you experience an eight minute. Um, I don't know if you've tried that. Have you tried that, um, Emma? Yeah. So um, to cut a long story short, the whole thing's about two and a half hours, but there's a build up to it. But the actual dementia, virtual dementia tour itself is eight minutes. So you're in a room where you're um zoned with um you've got sort of spikes in the, the the shoes you've got um earphones on you've got muffly noises coming through and you're in the dark and you're given directions or you're given yeah uh, things to do like oh fold this or fold that but you can't hear it properly so you it and it's supposed to give you a sense of what it might be like to live with moderate dementia and actually um there was one participant there and I I asked after I'd experienced it if I could sit in just on the periphery and be there in the room where other people were experiencing it and there was one chap there who literally for the whole eight minutes he did not move he said he felt absolutely terrified oh. and he actually talked about it in a very powerful way and it really does make you think or it did, did make you think but also feel 
you know, we, we can read about these things and we can read what it might be like, but in some way to try and experience some of those senses and or lack of um, was extremely powerful and highly recommended. And well, I think they- Where, they, where they, are these places, Gina? Where, where well, they, they, they come to you or they're mobile. Yeah. So you can, yeah. you know, they're all over the country. Um, probably not at the moment, but it's something mm -hmm. that anyone can get involved in and, and try out. And I think it's just absolutely brilliant and well worth it. Highly recommended. Mm. Sounds great. Ra Rachel's backed us up and said, I've done this. It's a very powerful resource. Everyone should try it. Um, yeah, I, I did it a few years ago at Congress. And I just wonder, I was wondering if there's anyone living with dementia on who'd, who'd, who'd put themselves through that experience. Of, um, who we've got on at the moment, but let's see. I'll put that question out. So if anyone's living with dementia who's been had that dementia experience, let us know what it felt like for you. Yeah. So we're, we're coming towards the end. Um, if you've got any questions that we've not asked yet, quickly fire them in. I've opened the polls just so you can tell us how you found today's seminar. Um, I think we've answered your dad. So there's your dad. So hopefully mum and dad are both happy with uh, today's presentation. <laughs> I think basically what I, the final thing is it's, it's just a joy working with Gina. She's an absolute star in this dementia world, you know, and, um, and you know, it's just, I'm just fired by her energy and enthusiasm and she doesn't, you know, she'll come back and say, I like this idea of what, what, what we're going to do next. There's no rest. It carries on. And that's kind of wonderful. That, and that's why I connected with that because it's similar to me, but she's more forceful and more like, I don't know why she gets the energy. I don't know where she gets the energy from, but she's wonderful. And um, I'd like to say that, basically. Blushing. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. Likewise. Thank Likewise. You. Rachel's agree. She said, oh, how lovely she definitely is. Oh, <laughs> thank you. And I've only just met Gina, but I've absolutely been inspired by the work that you do down there. And, you know, this is it's not even your job. It's not your day job, is it? This is just your extra stuff that you do because you've well, day job. Yeah. According to LinkedIn, if that's up to date, day job something totally different. So this is just yeah. this isn't work. This is passion. This is what what you just do while yeah. you're working. Gina, you've got to say something nice about Tony. Tony, you've been an absolute. Oh, oh God, sorry. Oh my God, sorry. I'm, do you know what? My I'm like. Have I heard this? I'm not very good at receiving compliments. So kind of I I hear I'm not, it. I'm and not it Tony, what I always say, and Tony knows this, is he, he is a creative genius. Somebody, I, I, I know I, that, I know that. But... Yeah, well, yeah. But somebody who can capture, I mean, and I've asked him to do little bits and pieces, and he's done, he showed me some of the other work that he's done. So he gets a bit of a narrative, which is very minimal. You did something for Big Ian recently, didn't you? Which I'm sure will be shared soon. He's given a little bit of narrative, and bang, he's able to create something that gets to right to the heart of the core of the very essence of what people want. And it's just, wow, it's it's wow. Thank you. I think that's the partnership though as well. That's just what we do. So I think that sums us both up together as well as individually. Yeah. You know, and I can see, you know, lots of things coming from it and lots of other projects and working with people who might be listening now would be great. You know, if anyone has any ideas, let us know. Let's get cracking because it's not going to end this. No. I want to know. I want to know what the next big thing is because I can see, like, like Gina. She's been like just in a house. Like she's that head's going to have been like whirling around. I'm just thinking, what's she planning for next year, Tony? What's what's coming up? I, I think this book idea is a project that's going to be big, really. If, if we get the go ahead, fingers crossed. You never know with publishing. Um, but we've I've, I've done a number of books with the publisher. Um, I know them. I know the guy Andrew is wonderful. He's very receptive and. Empathetic, and um, he's always really well. Fiona was well, hi, Fiona. Um, uh, um, Fiona's lovely lady from Scotland who works with children. And well, oh, you know, hi, Fiona. Um, Fiona anyone who has a Fiona said, lovely to hear the gentle tenderness with which you capture the sparkle and spirit of people. Oh, thank you. That's lovely. That's lovely. Yeah. So, um, I think the book project is will be time consuming because if you're going off the first one we did as a, as a rough guide it's you've got to get the story you've got to find the story of each individual person if there's 10 stories to be had you've got yeah. to find those people and then go to them and then start up again every time 
So I think it's yeah. one story, it's 10 different stories. So that will be, that's the challenge, but it's a, I like a challenge. I think, yeah, I think, I think as Tony says, to echo that, what we'd really like to do is have maybe between six and 10 stories. It might be a domiciliary care story. It might be somebody, you know, um, the Sikh community. We're looking at the Sikh community and the caring, the different cultural differences. Long distance caring, geographical caring is really challenging. So just some different contexts that we can share with the world and people will identify with and relate well, to. The, the big sacrifices that people make to care. Like I speak to one chap the other day who's, who has left his home down south to move to Leeds uh -huh. to look after his mum. So he's more or less retired from a, a big job he had as a scientist to move to look after his mum. So it's about that huge sacrifice that people make for the loved ones and that should go unnoticed and that's kind of um, the mission in a way for us. So um, and there'll be some great stories out there as well and some movie stories and beautiful stories. Mm. And, that's, and that's good. Sounds brilliant. If there's anything we can do to help when you're sort of harvesting and looking for stories, we, we would love to. Well, that, um, yeah. that, so, Emma, that'd be great. Thank you. We've already we've already actually thought about that, Emma. So spot yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, brilliant. So um, I shouldn't really have asked you the question of what you're going to do next yeah. few minutes to go. So now we've run over and it's my fault. So I'm sorry, but that's there you go. It was interesting to find out. Um, so thank you, Tony. Thank you, Gina. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for such an interesting inspirational talk um it's been really really great and love gina it's been really lovely to meet you because obviously i know tony so it's been great to meet you and sort of Excellent. develop a, a new friendship there um next week we have a conversation with deep so we have uh, rachel dory joy and drian who are going to come on and talk to us about the work that deep do and some of the work that the dementia diaries do so i'm looking forward to that anyone who's been on today you'll get a link for that so don't worry you don't have to find it and yeah, just thank you so much. Uh, keep doing what you're doing and let us know when you need any help from us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.